it is my absolute pleasure to host uh, the current uh, president uh, uh, sri lanka association of neurologists uh, or association of neurologists in sri lanka asn which is a member society of world federation neurology very good uh, day to you dr gamini patirana from sri lanka thank you for giving us time uh, on behalf of uh, world federation neurology world brain day, world brain day team and social media team uh, it is uh, our pleasure to host you today on behalf of our viewers uh, uh, dr patirana tell us uh, about you first uh, how did you become interested in neurology let's go back to your school days uh, thank you this sir thank you for uh, inviting me uh, to talk to you on this occasion um well uh, i did not have a great interest in becoming a neurologist in the first instance uh, but i wanted to study medicine so i went to the medical school and then as i go along studying it i developed some interest in neurology maybe because of the teachers and also the uh, probably i had been working more in neurology so then i developed some interest in neurology so how it how it began to become a neurologist so the you currently practice uh, neurology in sri lanka and uh, you are working at uh, national institute of neurology in sri lanka at present uh, as a senior neurologist uh, tell us about your experience uh, in the middle of covid-19 at present uh, what sort of a work uh, uh, are you doing at present uh, is it bulk of stroke uh, a bit of everything general neurology tell us our viewers uh, how it is to practice uh, neurology in public system in sri lanka in sri lanka we had couple of waves of covid-19 uh, uh, coming into our country and in between these waves we had some you know a uh, little bit less numbers of covid-19 patients up to the recent the third wave which we are experiencing right now probably we are at the onset of the steep curve um up to this time we didn't have did not have a major uh, problem in handling covid-19 patients uh we didn't the system was not overwhelmed we were within the capacity uh so all the neurology patients of course uh, they were coming in as usual they were being referred to us and uh, i'm not i don't think that uh, we had a big change in the uh, number of uh, patients being referred to us so the pattern of referrals it would have been probably the same but but having uh, been working in colombo which is a main center in sri lanka um there was uh, earlier there was so much of uh, uh, neurology patients being diverted to colombo which had not been happening over the last couple of months because uh, because of the limitation of movement for patients and uh, but otherwise uh, government had a mechanism of uh, uh, sending the drugs who are being followed up in the uh, hospital by post to home uh, trying to keep them at home so uh, um, didn't have a major difference but uh, keeping with the post vaccination problems we also had couple of cases of thrombotic episodes with uh, the vaccines a uh, very few uh, in numbers compared to the number of vaccinations were given but it didn't have a impact on the vaccination program so the the cerebral venous sinus thrombosis cases that you had uh, in your unit uh, did they have thrombocytopenia also or some with thrombocytopenia th- some with normal thrombocyte counts um we had only a few cases in fact i did not have a case by myself but i had uh, you know couple of cases which were handled by my colleagues Mm-hmm. um about 5 6 cases but all of them had thrombocytopenia mm-hmm. none of them without thrombocytopenia right the gamini as you know the we are in the middle of uh, world brain day 2021 campaign this year our theme is stop multiple sclerosis uh, at this point of time there are 2.8 million uh, multiple sclerosis uh, patients uh, all over the world uh, and uh, there are excellent uh, therapeutics available for this also so the world federation neurology felt uh, that uh, this year theme should uh, go on to advocate for better care for multiple sclerosis with the ambitious aim of uh, 
stop multiple sclerosis. Uh, how excited are you to see that World Federation Neurology is taking multiple sclerosis on this year? I think it's a great initiative. Now that there is uh, very much uh, evidence accumulating for very novel treatments, which are very effective, and they are game changers, most of them. Um, I see a problem even in the uh, developed setting that these new uh, pharmacological agents are very costly. A country like Sri Lanka, we are still having few numbers of uh, multiple sclerosis and NMOSD. Um, uh, uh, but uh, availability of pharmacotherapeutics, we are being a resource poor setting, we have only few of them. Uh, the most uh, uh, effective and efficacious ones, of course, I don't think we have yet. Um, it's, it's, a, it's very good that uh, WFN has declared uh, multiple sclerosis as an eye opener for people uh, to uh, get updated about the new treatment and then get them available in each country at least to serve these few numbers of patients who are having it. And as you know, we are partnering with uh, uh, Multiple Sclerosis uh, uh, International Foundation uh, to the, the do this uh, ambitious work. Uh, they also released uh, uh, the MS Atlas 3, which uh, is an eye-opener with uh, uh, some alarming numbers, uh, almost up to 70% of the countries. Uh, not being able to diagnose multiple sclerosis early and access to treatment, as you very correctly pointed out, uh, even in developed world, certain countries. Uh, what are your plans uh, as the current president of uh, Sri Lankan Neurology Association, or ASN, uh, for the World Brain Day, as well as uh, next week uh, the, we will be uh, celebrating World uh, Multiple Sclerosis Day uh, from MSIF. Uh, uh, do you have uh, activities in your uh, the council or, or plans uh, uh, that you plan to launch uh, in the coming weeks? Um, now, uh, because we are stuck with the COVID-19 steep curve right at the moment, most of the activities that we are planning to do have been actually cancelled, most of the physical activities. We have been confined to homes and, you know, we have been uh, isolated, social distancing, so... We are working currently online most of the things for activities as far as activities are concerned and awareness campaigns are concerned. Um, we hope because previous experience of the first and second waves, we didn't have much, you know, we didn't have a major problem. So hopefully Sri Lanka will come over the third uh, wave also. And at that point, we are still uh, one year to go. Uh, we hope to do certain activities. Unfortunately, we cannot meet people, we cannot go to peripheral, um, you know, uh, uh, out of Colombo hospitals to awareness campaigns. But uh, we have been working on multiple sclerosis and other demyelinating disorders. And there are a few patients under me at the moment with multiple sclerosis and people with optic neuritis and MOSD getting interferon. So we talk to them. We are in getting in touch with the, their families and so on. They're all stable at the moment. They don't have it, didn't have any relapses. Um, uh, even after the vaccination programs, we did not uh, see a major problem with relapses of uh, MS yet. And you, your members, as well as your patients and families, they are most welcome to visit the World Federation Neurology website. And on our World Brain Day page, uh, we have created a fabulous collection of uh, toolbox uh, where they can download banners, uh, posters, uh, things that things, things that they can post in Facebook, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, other social media platforms. Uh, we learned last year, uh, as I was chairing the World Brain Day campaign last year, we were basically living what you are going through right now in Melbourne. Uh, we were basically, in fact, uh, my own hospital, we had uh, well over 150 severely infected COVID-19 patients on a daily basis. Uh, we had uh, just over 800 deaths uh, in our elderly homes uh, at that time, including some hospital patients. Uh, and it was, uh, it was basically war footing at that time. But at night, uh, I virtually visited many countries uh, to conduct interviews like this. Uh, and uh, the, we ran a successful World Brain Day campaign 
nonetheless uh, i think we reached out to like 50 million people worldwide so hopefully despite the covid-19 pandemic uh, the brain matters of course uh, we have to advocate for brain health and i hope uh, you and your colleagues uh, and uh, your patients and their families uh, and patient support groups would use this opportunity to not only for advocate for multiple sclerosis and better care for multiple sclerosis uh, but better care for neurological disorders uh, in general also so we would uh, very much uh, like to see uh, more involvement uh, from asn and uh, uh, more importantly from your patients uh, and their families uh, and virtually the, the one of the good thing that we learned out of this covid-19 is uh, things that we can do behind the screen with regard to uh, sharing knowledge uh, and uh, uh, expanding knowledge in fact i told one of my colleagues in usa one thing that this pandemic had uh, has done to this world is uh, at least the educational opportunities uh, has become more or less equal uh, the the especially last year european academy of neurology opened up their conference free for everybody american headache society opened up their conference free for everybody i heard that uh, you and your colleagues uh, last year had uh, well over 1000 uh, medical students and others attending to as in virtual sessions uh, on a monthly basis uh, this is almost not not heard of before i mean you and me both know education is power and uh, the, that is the solution for most of the problems that we face uh, so let's hope uh, that uh, we would uh, use education to be good at what we do and hopefully combat uh, this uh, pandemic also uh, finally gamini i personally know that uh, you are a multi talented person you are not only a neurologist you are a good singer and uh, you are very good at uh, music also i personally believe that uh, the it is very important for us to maintain humanity in medicine uh, and humanity in neurology in particular we are both uh, clinicians interested in brain what is your message to youngsters uh, who are watching this uh, medical students and young neurologists uh, uh, on work life balance uh, and uh, uh, how important uh, for us to uh, get a uh, the get a sort of grip uh, on many things uh, in life uh, beyond academic and clinical activities uh well uh speaking from a resource poor setting and uh, in the pandemic situation of course uh, be interested in clinical medicine bedside medicine bedside neurology plus now as uh, you quite correctly mentioned the, the potential of internet is being uh, now uh, everywhere uh, we never had a, a awareness campaign where we had 1000 participants uh, one of those uh, uh, campaigns we had 1000 participants throughout the country so we were able to reach the whole country Uh, with the available uh, internet facility it's covid-19 pandemic uh, may, uh, a change that covid-19 made for us uh, well uh, these days um, we are limited you know we are house bound and we can't practice medicine real bedside medicine sometimes we see patients uh, on the screen and talk to them on the phone and trying to manage with the limited uh, resource availability um but that gives us more talents i think more more uh, skills in uh, managing patients so uh, uh spend this time uh, effectively you may have uh, you know uh, learn certain things that you have missed or maybe you have other uh, talents that you can uh, uh various, various creative stuff that you can do of course uh, i have been in music for some time so i do music when i have time at home because i'm not uh, having too much of work at hospital right now at the moment thank you gamini the all the very best and uh, the we on behalf of uh, world federation neurology and world brain day team and public awareness and advocacy team from the global end uh, we send our best wishes to our sri lankan colleagues and sri lankan patients and families uh, we hope uh, and wish uh, all of you to stay strong and stay well and hopefully together to see this uh, pandemic uh, end uh, at a personal level i believe uh, this is a global pandemic and this is a global problem it is sad that uh, most political leaders uh, globally seems to have made this a national problem this is not a national problem this is a global threat 
and a global problem. Whatever you are experiencing in Sri Lanka today will come and bite us uh, in Australia and whatever we experience in Australia today will bite back uh, in Sri Lanka and other countries because we are a uh, united world at this point of time as we travel between other countries quite often, may not be now, but on a normal time and we every country is very well, very much connected. Therefore, we have to find a solution to combat uh, this uh, pandemic uh, as a unified world. Let's hope that uh, the concerted efforts uh, of uh, academics uh, would uh, translate to that and hopefully, eventually we would see this uh, pandemic end and hopefully we can see each other uh, physically, either here in Australia or back in Sri Lanka, which happened to be my own hometown also. Uh, so best wishes uh, and uh, the, 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 be the force uh, with you all to combat uh, this uh, virus. And again, uh, my sincere gratitude to giving us time from your busy schedule to talk about uh, the current status, uh, Gavini. Thank you, Tisra, and best wishes from here to you. And being a Sri Lankan, we are very proud that you are heading uh, WFN uh, World Brain Day activities. Thank you very much, Tisra. Uh, take care.